Hello everyone, in the previous video we talked about how you can link the Cloud Firestore back-end database to your front-end React application and how you can read the data from the database and display that in the React application. So in today's video we take a look at how we can implement the, the functionality to create new records in the existing databases with the new button here. So right now we have a very simple HTML button here that does nothing when I click on it. The code for this button is actually written in the previous video so if you're following along you'll do just fine and this code right here is just a continuation from the previous video so nothing's changed about this code. It's the same code. But before I dive into the code I want to just acknowledge a comment here from Per Parag Barasar. So Parag says that you press Control and the plus button to increase the size of the console window which is a very big issue that I had in previous videos. So I had this really small console text and those of you on small screens can't really see what's going on so now I can just you know zoom this in. So thank you Parag for telling me this. Now I'm gonna look at the code here. I'm gonna see what I what has to be done here. So let's think about this. We want to create a new record in the database by clicking on this new button here. So the first thing we're going to do is go look for that new button. So the code for the button is right here. Button class name equals button new. So we want to make an API call when someone clicks on this button. And we detect the clicks by using on click. So on click equals to handle new. Handle new is going to be our API call function that I'm going to write right here. Const handle new equals to an arrow function. And I'm going to make this arrow function asynchronous because we're making API calls. So whenever you make API calls, you always either want promises or async await. So there are actually a few methods that you can use to write new data to the Firestore database. I'm gonna show you a few today, and the first method is gonna be using setDoc. So setDoc is a function that we're gonna get from Firestore to set a document, and that is why we're gonna have to import that from Firestore. So import setDoc. And setDoc takes in two arguments, the first is going to be the document reference and next is going to be payload. So the payload is where your data actually goes and the document reference is telling Firestore where in the database should we put this document. And of course I'm going to do a wait here. So if you have any code down here, it's going to wait for the API call to finish before running. So that's why we are using async and a wait here. So right now we haven't yet specified the document reference and the payload. So let's go ahead and do that const doc ref equals to a document reference. The way we make document references in Firestore is by using the doc function and this is something that we're going to have to import from Firestore as well so be sure to import that and uh, it's going to take in three arguments. The first argument is going to be a database handle which is what we have been importing from Firebase all this time. So dot slash Firebase is this file which we export default get Firestore. So this is something that we've done in the previous video uh, we're just going to write the database reference, the, the handle here, so db. And then next is going to be the collection name. So the collection name is called colors because if I look in the console, this is the name of our collection, colors. That's why we're putting colors in here. So the database handle and then colors which is the collection name and the third is going to be the document ID. So let me show you what the document ID refers to. You can see here we have three documents and each of them represents red, green, and blue individually. And the random string you see here, that's the ID. So each individual document has a unique ID and the, the way I generated this was when I create a new document, I just click auto ID and it's just going to give me a random ID. So in this case, uh, let's just set this ID to be color 001 and this ID has to be a unique ID and the next thing I'm going to do is make the payload so the payload is where our data actually goes it's going to be an object and then we can say name name let's call this black and then value so the value of the color is going to be hash 000 because that's the value for black and I'm, I'm using name and value here because if I look at the console each of the colors are going to have two fields which is name and value that's what I'm creating here I'm creating a color called black I'm just going to come here to my React application, refresh this, and let's just click New. So what we expect is to see a black color appear here. That's exactly what happens. And this is not just a local change either, because if I look at my console, we can see color 001 appear here with the name of black and the value of hash 000. So you see that? That's the ID that we're setting here. And then that's black. The problem here is that if I already have a color 001 here with a different value, let's say we had a different value of pink, then the value is going to be F0F. So what if we already had a record in our database with the, with the ID of color 001 and I come here and click new. It's going to overwrite that existing value because that's what set does. We're using set doc. 
Um, so set doc here, uh, we are overriding the existing document if it exists. If it doesn't exist, set doc will create a new document. And it's all dependent on this ID that you're putting in here in the document reference. If you put in an ID that doesn't already exist in the database, it's going to create a new document. And if this ID already exists in the database, then it's going to override that existing document. And there are ways to modify it so that we are just editing the data and we're not overriding the entire data itself. And that's what I'm going to be showing in the next video. That's when we actually write functionality for the edit link here but right now let's just focus on creating the new colors there are a few issues with the way we are coding this at the moment so the first issue is that when we create new we're just creating a new predefined color which is black that's not what we want we want to create a custom color let's say I want to create pink I want to be able to create click on new and write pink and write in value for pink and it should go into the database here the next issue is that I don't want to specify a color here on my own, right? I want to use this functionality here in the console, which is auto ID. I want Firestore to generate the ID for me. I don't want to write that uh, ID myself. So the way we're going to do that is that we're going to use a different approach. So set doc can be very useful if you want to override existing documents or if you want to edit existing documents and change the values, which is what we're going to be talking about in the next video. But there's another way we can do this if we want to just auto-generate this ID and not pass this in. So that's by using something else called add doc. So add doc here is going to tell Firestore to generate an ID for us instead of us having to manually type that ID in. And I'm going to get rid of doc here because we won't be using that anymore. And I'm going to get rid of this entire thing. We're no longer using set doc. Right now, what we're going to be using is we're going to be using add doc. So add doc looks like this. Similar to set doc. Add doc takes in two arguments as well. I'm gonna write them side by side so you can have a comparison. In set doc, you're gonna to have to pass in a document reference, a doc reference, and a payload. And in add doc, you don't pass in a doc reference, instead, you pass in a collection reference because you're adding a document to the collection. Because you don't have to specify a specific document ID, you're just telling Firestore which collection do I wanna add this document to. The next is gonna be payload. So, collection reference and payload. And set doc uses docref and payload. So you want to be very careful here. You want to put the collection reference here in your add doc and not your document reference. So the reason I'm pointing this out here is because I've noticed that this is a very common mistake that people tend to make. So if you have an add doc function here and you pass in a document reference in as the first argument, you're going to get an error. Uh, just like Connor here, you're going to get an error because you're supposed to pass in a collection reference. You're telling Firestore which, in which collection do I want to add this document to. Alright, so let's get rid of set doc here so we can focus on our add doc. I'm going to add a weight and let's make collection ref. Previously, we added doc here, right? But that's not what we're going to be doing here because we're targeting a collection now. And this has to be imported from Firebase slash Firestore. As usual, the first argument is going to take in is the database handle, which is what we're importing from Firebase. And the second argument here is going to be the name of the collection, which is colors. And collection is not going to take in a third argument here, unlike doc. We're not going to take in ID here, so we just leave it blank. We only have two arguments here, the database handle and the colors. And let's make the payload now. The payload equals to an object that takes in the name of black and then the value has to be hash 000 let's save this and let's see if this works so what you're going to know this is that we're not specifying an id here we are not saying um color 001 that's not what we're doing so we're going to leave it up to firestore to generate an id for us and i'm going to go to my react app i'm going to delete this black existing black color from the console and let's create new. So you see black appear there and do you see that the ID is automatically generated, it's no longer color 001. But this is still not what we want, right? Because we don't want to hard code this black here. We want to create our custom colors. I want to create pink, I want to create um, purple. So I'm going to use basic JavaScript prompts, which means I'm not going to be using complicated forms and complicated input fields. So const name equals to prompt And then semicolon. So ideally, we want to get rid of this hard-coded values here. We don't want it to always be black and 0, 0, 0. I'm just going to clone this down and change this to value. So enter color value, and then we're going to replace black with name because name is what we're getting from the user, the prompt, right? And the value is going to be replaced like that. Here you can see that we have duplicates here. The key and the value have the same variable names. So in ES6 syntax, in JavaScript ES6, you can just get rid of that and just do this 
So now this should work. And when I go to my browser, let's hit new. And you can see this prompt. This is the prompt that we coded. So the color name is going to be pink. And then the color value is going to be hash F0F because that's the color for pink. And we see pink there. So this is our final version here. We can create more colors. We can create another color. We can create FF0. So that's actually yellow. And then we can create more colors. That's, um, that's going to be 0FF. So we have cyan, we have yellow, we have pink. But there's one last thing that I want to show you before I end the video. So here we're using add doc, right? We're not using set doc. So the document ID is automatically generated. But what if I wanted to get that ID right after the document has been created? So there's one way you can get the ID when you're using add doc. So instead of just leaving a wait add doc in the middle of nowhere like this, you can assign that to a variable we can call this document reference, so doc ref. And then now that we have doc ref, we can do console.log doc ref dot id. So that's gonna give us the ID of this newly created document. The new ID is, and then concatenate that with doc ref dot id. And let's look at that in the console here. I'm gonna refresh this, I'm gonna create a new color blur. And then let's set the color value to be ff0. And our new color is created here and the new ID is displayed in the console. This, so this is the way you can get the ID which is right here. So this is the ID of the newly created color. So ideally, when we click on edit here, I'm gonna edit this another color name to become yellow, right? So I should be able to click on edit and you know, it's gonna prompt me and I can change the name from another color to yellow. So that's what we're gonna be doing for the next video. And in the next video, I'm gonna show you more how you can use set doc to edit existing fields. And there's actually a way you can use set doc without overriding existing values. So that's what I'm gonna be showing you in the next video. And also I have a request here if I look at the comments from Ian. So Ian says that I should make a video on Firebase authentication with login and profile pictures and whatnot. So uh, that's going to be the next few videos I'm going to make for this series. So that's it for this video. Hope to see you in the next one.